So this is a talk about W3 Name. Uh, it's our IPNS republishing service that's currently available on web3.storage. This is just how it works at the moment. Uh, it's been like that for a while. Uh, but yeah, you can you can go on web3.storage, uh, look at the docs and use it, use it right now if you like. Um, but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it. Um, so uh, yeah, IPNS uh, is a way of adding kind of mutability to IPFS. IPFS does immutable really well. Um, uh, and it even has like, um, to, to add this mutability, it has this thing called MFS, which is essentially this thing which allows you to sort of manipulate a DAG um, as you add new, uh, add new things to it or take things away from it. Um, and that kind of gives you the illusion of kind of mutability. Um, but what it's doing is creating a new thing each time and you get a different CID. So if you share like a CID of a DAG with someone uh, and then you change it and you get a new CID, you're gonna have to share that new CID for them to see those updates that you made. And so wouldn't it be cool if there was like a CID that you didn't have to kind of, ch that didn't change when you changed the, um, the, the DAG? Well, that's IPNS. Uh, so um, kind of. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, a little bit of background on IPNS if you don't, uh, don't know about it. Like it all starts with kind of um, cryptographic keys, public key and a uh, private key. The public key is the old looking one and the private key is the shiny gold one, which is a special one which you shouldn't share with anyone. Uh, <laughs> emojis for keys are <laughs> pretty limited, so apologies, yeah. but uh, that's, that's what we got, so that's what we're going to work with. Um, and so just to be clear, this, this, these are the same sort of keys that you, that you kind of typically work with in, uh, with IPFS. Um, so when you IPFS um, in it, you'll get a key generated for you, and you can list it out like that, and you can, it's called, called self by default. Uh, and then you can generate your own key and call it uh, my key, uh, and you get a new one. And just, these are just the same sort of keys as you work with, with, with IPFS, just to be clear. Um, and so IPNS records, how do you create them? Well, you've got some data and what you do is you just sign it with the private key. Uh, but what is, what is the data? Um, well, um, the data is like a, a CID, a sequence number, expiry information, some other junk, not, can't remember, but it's not really important. Um, uh, but like you can think of an IPNS record as a mapping between uh, like a CID or a it's actually like an IPFS path um, and uh, a, C, uh, so a public key and a, um, and a CID. So uh, this is the public key, this is the CID. And the cool thing about IPNS records is that can, they can change over time. You can revise them. So you can basically say this key now points at this new CID um, a little bit later in time. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, so typically in um, IPFS, you'd publish your, um, your IPNS records to the DHT uh, or over Gossip Sub. Um, what we have in uh, web3.storage is this uh, simple kind of simple mutability kind of API, um, which allows you to create your IPNS records um, and, uh, and post them off to the API. Um, and so you create them and post them off and um, it means you don't have to run your own IPFS node, uh, which can be good in like uh, web applications, uh, maybe in like mobile when you've got like resource constraints or IoT uh, kind of situations, uh, stuff like that. So all, all you do is you create your record and you post it off to the URL that corresponds to your public key. So uh, that guy. Uh, and then, um, yeah, once you've posted it off to web3.storage, you can get the latest revision using a, like a, a HTTP get um, and it will give you back the current IPNS record um, for that um, public key. That's kind of cool. Um, because like, you know, it might have changed since the last time you asked, um, or you might have not got it yet. Uh, so it's good to be able to get the, well, re resolve the current version. So, um, so that's good. But how do you know when uh, the record changes? Well, because you might not be the one that's actually publishing that change to someone else. You're just kind of consuming it maybe. Um, well, we have a uh, WebSocket for that. Uh, so you can listen on the WebSocket for, uh, on particular keys and get uh, pushed an update or the new IPNS record as it gets published. So uh, that's cool. You know the record is good that comes down the line because it's been signed by the author. Uh, and you can also like, validate newness uh, based on like, if you have an existing one, you can compare them and uh, make sure the sequence number is greater and expiry date, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so there's that. That's rad. Um, uh, and... If that's not enough, then what we also do is we publish these records that we receive to the DHT. So these names are resolvable by anyone running an IP, IPFS node uh, and even at IPFS gateways. 
uh, which is kind of cool. You can just type ips.io slash ipns slash key and it will resolve the name to the latest version, get that IPNS record, and also resolve that CID to whatever data it is and serve it back to you, which is, uh, which is super useful. Um, cool. Uh, so this is a, that's it, by the way. That's the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the simple mutability API that we have. This is a demo of a, um, like a DRAND relay. Um, and so DRAND is a distributed randomness beacon. Every 30 seconds, it emits new randomness uh, for people to consume. They have multiple nodes collaborating together to generate this randomness. Um, and, and so all this demo is, is this is a relay that um, updates an IPNS record with the new randomness value as it gets emitted from, um, from DRAM. So how does that work? Um, well, all we have is this uh, kind of relay, it's VM, it's just, it's just a script that's listening to DRAM randomness and every 30 seconds it will receive that randomness. Um, and it kind of looks like this. Uh, every randomness has like a round number, which is sort of the ID for the randomness, the randomness value, which is this, um, and the um, signature, which typically the client you're using will validate that for you. But it means that you can um, ensure that the randomness came from the chain that you expect it to be coming from. Um, so that's good. Um, so anyway, um, once we've got some new randomness every 30 seconds, what the relay does is it actually puts that data on web3.storage. Um, and when web3.storage, uh, does it gets it? It does what it normally does, and it um, creates a deal on Filecoin, stores that data, it puts it on Elastic IPFS, um, and then we have a CID for that new randomness. Once we've got that CID, um, we can create a new revision of our IPNS record, saying that this key now points to this new random value. Um, and once we've created that record, we post it off, poof, into Web3.storage, and it does uh, what it does, and it takes it puts it into the IPFS network uh, so that it's resolvable by any node on the network uh, and also at gateways. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, that's how it works and it's actually running. So um, you can, we, we can take a look if we open up this. Oh no, my mouse. Where is the mouse? Here we go. It's, uh, it's open source on GitHub so you can just check it out. Um, I've got a, a key running in production. It's a demo. So <laughs> but this key, you can actually go and ask uh, web3.storage API for the current IPNS record for this key. Um, and if I make that a little bit bigger, here we go. Um, so the, the value here is just for convenience, you, if you want to pick it out. This, this record here is the actual IPNS record. You can pick out that value from the record. Um, this is just for, uh, for, for fun and easy ease of use, but um, I should be able to uh, open up whoosh, ibfs.io, ibfs slash this particular uh, CID, and it should return me the randomness. Uh, so sometimes the gateways are not too happy. Um, so here we go. This, uh, this is the current round seven. Uh, so we've got 790. So I'm going to try this out. So if you go to dram.love, this is the official DRAM website. Uh, oh, hello. Oh. There we go. Uh, yeah, so 793. OK, so that was reasonably. Where's my mouse gone? It's over here. There we go. So this is the current the current value. I think we just put in 790, so we were like three off. Um, okay, so anyway, but the cool thing is, uh, I think, is if we uh, if we actually take that um, IPNS key, we should be able to do the same thing. Um, uh, hi, ponies. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and it, so it resolved that current, current value for the IPNS record. It's like one behind, but I, I don't know how the IPNS resolution works. Um, we need quorum and the, 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 Anyway, so that's that. That's, uh, that's IPNS um, uh, publishing over API and uh, putting it in the IP, IPFS network and then resolving it and also resolving IPNS records from IPFS. And you can, so you can do that also from like any IPFS node that you've got running. Um, and that's my talk. Thank you for listening.
Well, we have like five minutes if there are questions. Yeah. Um, question. So, do you have a recommended expiration time that you tell people to use? <laughs> Um, in, so we have a JS client for this, which, um, which is useful information I didn't tell you. Uh, and so it adds an ex like a far future expiry date. It's like a year or something. Um, we do republish these, um, the, the IPNS records to account for like network churn. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's kind of your, no, I don't have a specific like recommendation. I think the, the default is like 24 hours or something in IPFS. Um, but you've got the key there to resign all the time. Like, yeah. If you give it to a provider, you definitely need to remember it. Yeah, exactly. What's, what's the expiration on the on the urine ones? Because technically, they're only sticking around for 30 seconds, right? So do you shorten the yeah, expiration? Yeah, I should shorten the expiration. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, like essentially, it's kind of your responsibility to put a good expiration on it, I guess. Um, yeah. How do you consider this, uh, like, do you have it to to web free storage so it'll, like, keep republishing? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's terrifying. Like, <laughs> having one key that is permanent, have permanent address to your customer is just kind of terrifying. So we're looking at, like, Ways to delegate permissions when you can, and then hold on to delegate if you future yeah future stuff is kind of in your hands perhaps um there's also like i saw the other day that there's this new reframe protocol that has ipns um methods which would be cool to support as well um as what we have there's also like a whole bunch of dns stuff coming out of ipns too that like connects with a bunch of other Any other questions? I'll go on. Uh, has anyone used this yet? Like, no, I don't know. It's real, real. We've got like 500 or so IPNS records that, um, and that's just uh, individual records, but like they can get um, obviously updated with new sequence numbers every so often. I don't know how many actual updates we've had off the top of my head, but I think we've got. Not many. <laughs> uh, I think IPNS's uh, reputation has been uh, a little bit flaky of, of recent, and so um, I think not a lot of people know about it. But maybe this is the thing that is makes it a bit more accessible and uh, uh, you know, easy to use. I don't know. Also, it's, it's been like a beta feature that we yeah. put into the client. It's yeah. Kind of like a free storage account where, and like, we're doing a new version, hopefully this week, we release where anybody would have an account can just publish the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, this isn't in your docs yet, and you're in the HTTP API docs. Yeah, because of the beta ness of it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, are you using the like, UTP sub gossip thing that you think to put this, or is this um, in the In the republisher node, um, I can't remember. Is it on by default in in Go nodes? Right. Yeah. yeah. So we should turn it on because <laughs> uh, that would be trivial because it's already like listening on stuff and yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you get updates? Is it purely when you get an update to web free storage you publish it? Before? Yeah. So cur currently, like, if you take this outside of there and pub publish a new record, if you yeah, if you publish one through web free storage and then publish a new one through IP, uh, IPFS, then we don't take in that new value and then update our, our cache. Um, so that's an improvement for, for the future, but um, yeah. So that's probably the pump stuff would help too. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Was there like a canonical use case for which we built this? Like why, why do we build this? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's for like Yeah, I mean, like, so I wanted to enable like the mutability use case, be, be able to build apps that have that uh, allow data to be changed and for people to receive updates to them and show like you know like document based things or, or whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. Whenever you're like just run a server, people aren't going to use it. So we're like, okay, if you can host these, and then there's like a consensus mechanism, and you're sending it to just one server, so maybe people will use it. 
and it has to be within something it has it's like there's some other issues with that DNS, like even once you have the service being tackled. But you don't even get to those until you're running the service and people are actually using it. How reliable has it been for you? Have you do you have any usage of it? Was like did it actually like did it get reliable more than before when you run this now? Uh, I mean it's super because of because of the local cache that we have in Web Free Stories, the the centralized thing is yeah. super reliable i guess as far as um uh, centralized things are um the ipns thing i mean we haven't made any progress in making that like we haven't done any changes or bug fixes to make that more reliable as it as it were um but i like i know the ipns resolution uh, like has from talking to adeen that 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 process has got a lot faster um since a while ago um, so, yeah, there have been improvements there, I think. Um, I don't know exactly what they are. <laughs> also, just all the stuff in the DHT guy asked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more question again. Um, so, we have a year of experience. So do you know uh, what is, what's the danger of attacking parts of a lot of this great Why would you want to do very small upgrades? Uh, like, if you, if you have a long expiration time, then I think like the the only danger i think is that um you can't just publish it and forget about it because of like the the peers that you put that information on might drop out the network and then no one will be able to resolve it so like it's it's that like uh balance of like how <laughs> who's, who's going to actually be able to send it back to you um yeah i d don't know if there's any other uh, yeah Mm -hmm. And it's also just verification is how the short Yeah, there's no verification protocol. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's just like Yeah, I think. No fun this name now. Well, we <laughs> verification <laughs> all in one social media. You can set the sequence number to be like the maximum value and then <laughs> no more updates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Only if you have the key, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool, thank you. Mm -hmm.